Okay, guys, sorry about that. First time running a live stream, and there's no way that they tell me when it's it's actually live, so that's a little bit awkward. I'm trying to get this going, so from now on, a lot of these videos should be live streams. This video we're going to be talking about in our uh, Scrapebox and Web Scraping tutorials, we're going to be talking about a neat trick that I discovered for reducing, significantly reducing the time that it takes to run a general email scrape. Let's head over to my VPS server here. Make sure that this is uh, showing up properly. So, oftentimes when you get done with the uh, scraping URLs, uh, I resurrected this from an archive. This is an HVAC URL list from my workflow archive. And you can see this, this sample is 250,000 URLs. And that's actually a lot higher than, than what I do nowadays. I try to get it, uh, crunch it down as much as possible because when you get to, when you get above 150,000 URLs, so if you get to 200,000 plus, um, Scrapebox tends to slow down severely and I've talked to support about it and they basically say it's Windows fault and that Windows locks threads and then therefore there's nothing they can do about it and so basically the solution is to just split your URLs up into multiple jobs and that's actually a lot faster so 150 URLs or less you'll notice that you can scrape like 70k or maybe even 100k pretty quickly like you you can scrape like 50k within literally a matter of minutes but then the further along you get it slows down uh pretty severely um so you know obviously you want to split your jobs up but that's also really inconvenient so the ideal thing to do is to grab check on the metadata. This is what I call a pre-meta uh, scrape or a pre-metadata pre filter or whatever. So I'll, I'll typically grab the metadata and metadata, metadata grabs fairly quickly even at million, a million URLs plus. And then with each line item, and I've talked about this in past videos, you can come in here and and go remove filter URLs not containing or URLs containing. So that's a really great way to to drop your total URL size. Excuse me. But it requires a little bit of manual work and even if you do that, you're still looking at a final URL list that may not even have emails on the page. And so in my automator workflow, I often will do an alive check on the add-on to make sure that you know we can access the page. So that's kind of a no-brainer, common sense one. It's a part of the workflow. And recently, I discovered this trick, and I haven't added it to my automator sequences yet. But somewhere at the end, what you'd want to do is a similar sort of—it's not an alive check, but it's a check on the uh, using the page scanner to look for the at symbol. I'm not sure what that's technically called, the at, you know, the at symbol, but basically you just, when you load your URLs from Scrapebox, you can come into the platform mask and edit it. And uh, let me uh, click none on these. And then you'll add a new footprint that just, you just have to put the at symbol here, just like this, and then click add. And then I, I like to, I've been calling it the email checker footprint. And then you can just check that off and uh, click close. And actually make sure that it's, yeah, it's in there. That's all you have to put. Basically what Scrapebox will do is it'll, it'll look for the at symbol on the page. Because if the at symbol is used at all, it's likely used in an email. So even though the, uh, the page scanner only uses uh, up to 200 connections, we're gonna do 215 and read timeout of roughly 30. Um, even though it only uses the skip processing page is equal to probably 3,000 kilobytes, that's 3 megabytes uh, page size. You could do bigger than that, maybe 5 or something like that. Um, even though it's only 200 connections, the page scanner will run really quickly because it's looking for a very simple pattern. One of the reasons it takes longer to do the the email scrape 
or the phone number scrape is because it uses regular expression and that rejects the more complicated the instructions are in that rejects then it takes longer to do that per page and so if you're just look if they're just looking for a single symbol it's pretty simple and that, that's that's why the uh, alive check is really fast and that's uh that's also why the, I think the metadata is pretty quick to grab because it's like a hard parameter, not like a, a complicated pattern or a formula that it has to resolve, you know. And so this this will run pretty quickly. And let me just click go on this just to give you an idea. Uh, yeah, I got the right proxies in. See, it'll start reading it. And when it finds it, it'll throw down the email checker. Uh, label that we gave it there to say hey we found this footprint you know and then uh, this will often freeze once it gets to the end so you kind of just have to check to make sure it says 100 percent done and then you can come over here into the scrape box folder under add-on sessions to the page scanner data and it'll it'll load up into this temporary file so basically you can just go to the task manager and just kill the page scanner once it's 100% complete and then just come into this uh, add-on sessions folder and just drag it over. And once that happens inside the folder, it'll be formatted like, uh, where's a, it'll be formatted like this, URL, uh, little line break above the enter key and then it'll say email checker. And so basically what you want to do is throw that list back into Scrapebox and then just say remove URLs not containing and then you'll just go boom email like this. It'll look for that line break and, and you can like replace that if it's if you wanted to but anyways so remove all the URLs that are not containing this and then basically you can go you can throw this into a text document or notepad plus plus and then just go find you know this chunk right here and replace it with nothing and then you can just remove remove all those from the URLs and save your file um, which probably sounds like a lot but it's actually a lot less than what you'd have to do when you when you when you manually manually hand it handle it anyways because like let's see this sample is too big for me I'm not sure what I I probably just let this run in the past when I ran this scrape but does it have contact let's see yeah it does it has the contact so what I would do is normally is I would run uh, I would grab the metadata right and then I would filter it by saying you know you remove URLs not containing plum or whatever right and then I'd copy all those into a sheet over here and then I would throw the original list back in and say remove all URLs not containing HVAC and then I'd throw all those into a sheet over on the right and I'd use all the various keywords that are related to HVAC whether it's plumbers electricians heating maybe there's one that says heating uh, maybe do condition cool you know, I'd throw several terms in into a single sheet and then I'd copy them and throw them back over, remove the duplicates, and then I'd remove all that metadata by going remove everything after, you know, some certain symbol and basically clean it up so that I have the URLs again. So once you get back down to that level, and sometimes nowadays I'm finding that's more and more necessary as I continue to do deep scrapes um, to, to do a pre meta filter. Uh, and so even if you get to the end of that road, you still, don't, again, you still don't know what emails are on page. And so this trick is, I think it's essential and you, you don't actually have to manually do it. You can include it in your automator sequence at the very end. And when you have the, you, that, that final file, you can then take those results and you can, you can either do a pre meta, you can either do a, you know, a, uh, grab check on the metadata and can and go ahead and do your pre meta filter uh, Before you do the data or you can just do it right then and there it just it just depends on how big the sample is and how accurate you think the terms are like uh, the, the URLs are in terms of having the terms you need uh, When you do the scrape, but the point the <laughs> the point is that this trick with the page scanner or it's, it's down here 
This trick does significantly reduce the amount of processing time and also the URL sample. And you, you basically want to get that URL sample as compressed as you possibly can. So it's a really sweet trick. I just wanted to share that with you guys really quickly. You can see this is 4% finished. Kind of taking forever, really. Let me see. Just curious. I can see its speed here. I guess that's about right. Maybe it's the page size thing that I put that is maybe making it take a little bit longer. Some of those are timing out. It could just be that I put too high of a timeout on the uh, on the settings. That's what I have on the, my other VPS. So, anyways, that's pretty much it, guys. Appreciate you watching. Hope that was helpful, and I will catch you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.